COVID-19 cases are surging across China as people take advantage of new freedoms. Nationwide frustration and unprecedented public protests forced authorities to ease quarantine and travel restrictions. But since then, more and more people are testing positive. Official figures on infections and fatalities remain low, but some estimates put the likely death toll at more than 1 million by the end of next year. People in Beijing line up to get nasal spray boosters. Cases are surging after the government abruptly ended its strict zero COVID policy in the wake of nationwide protests against the restrictions. Authorities are trying to persuade reluctant seniors and others at risk to get vaccinated to prevent large scale outbreaks, hospitalizations, and deaths. Those already showing symptoms make their way to temporary clinics set up around the city, like this public gymnasium where they can get medical advice and treatment. Others are opting to stay home either because they're already sick or trying to avoid infection. That means deliveries of food and everyday items are in heavy demand. But scores of workers are also coming down with the virus, so packages pile up on the streets unclaimed. In China's financial hub, Shanghai, schools have switched to online classes as cases soar. Nurseries and childcare centers are also set to close. Across the country, people were quick to return to old habits when the restrictions were eased, crowding shopping malls, subway stations, restaurants. For young people, it's about going out, traveling and enjoying life. Many popular places are already full and it's difficult to make reservations. Life is returning to pre-pandemic levels. The freedoms have come at a price. The official death toll remains low, at a little more than 5,200, but experts believe the real figure is many times higher and that China may be facing its worst surge yet in the build-up to the winter travel season and Lunar New Year when hundreds of millions of workers will travel home by road, rail and air. And journalist Fabian Kretschmer joins me now from Beijing. So, Fabian, is there any way to estimate the actual scale of infections and deaths in China? Well, we try our best. I mean, the, we cannot use the official data anymore. Um, the data is really not only um, not credible anymore, but really misleading. Why? It has a simple reason. Uh, people don't get tested anymore at the designated testing sites, so the vast majority of infections are uh, is, uh, going unreported. And uh, so we use other tools. For example, uh, we analyze big data. Um, for example, how many pandemic-related keywords have been used in search engines or at hashtags in, uh, on social media. Or we use uh, the available online polls. And, you know, all those um, uh, data suggest here in Beijing is basically right now one of the epicenters of the pandemic and also one of the places where the first COVID wave will peak probably the earliest, it could already peak at the end of the month. And we know that probably most of the people here in Beijing have already been infected in the last two weeks and now are slowly recovering. And uh, in the beginning, especially, there were long queues in front of hospitals, especially at the fever clinics. That has improved quite a bit. But we know from reporters who visited funeral homes and also crematorium that um, they are working at full capacity. So that all points to an excessive amount of deaths, but we don't know exactly how many. That is really uh, very difficult to answer right now. Well, certainly the government can't ignore these facts on the ground as you describe them. You know, the, the lines at the hospitals and the crematoriums working overtime or just people not showing up for work because they're sick. So would the government possibly consider returning to this zero COVID policy? Well, that is uh, literally impossible. Uh, zero COVID was basically um, to contain the virus completely. And once, you know, uh, the virus has spread to a certain amount, like uh, it has in China, of course, there's no turning back anymore. What we could see is some kind of um, efforts to slow the spread of the virus. For example, that schools would uh, get suspended or maybe uh, elderly homes getting closed uh, for visitors. Um, those measures, yes, th th those can happen. But um, those really lockdowns that we've seen during uh, the zero COVID policy here, 
um, they will not happen again. I'm quite sure about that because there were also many big reasons why the government has suspended uh, zero COVID. It was not only the public protest and the, the, the public sentiment um, that has uh, brought down zero COVID, also the really de de uh, deterior deteriorating effects on the economy. Um, so zero COVID was not sustainable anyway. So I don't think there will be a returning back to that policy. What about vaccination in China? Up to now, they use their own vaccines. Are they effective enough? Or would they consider using foreign jabs at some point? Well, um, the, the Chinese government long had the opportunity to use uh, foreign uh, vaccines. For example, BioNTech, they were long waiting to enter the market here, but uh, they never received an approval. And I think right now the uh, big question is um, rather not whether they will use foreign vaccines, but rather uh, how fast they can uh, get their elderly population here in China vaccinated with their domestic uh, vaccines. They also do the job. They're also efficient. Uh, but for them, it's very critical that uh, you receive a third uh, booster shot um, to be effective efficient against Omicron. And the booster rate, especially among the people who are 80 years or older, is really too low. So it's really a fight against the time. And uh, so far, of course, the vaccination campaign is, you know, increasing. But I mean, the speed is not enough. Uh, we basically have to get all the elderly vaccinated by the end of January. And I mean, that's almost an impossible task. Fabian Kretschmer in Beijing. Thanks a lot, Fabian.